Hello everyone and welcome to Judy's Creations in Crochet. And today is February the 22nd, 2024. And I'm really happy you're here with me today. If you're a first time viewer, I hope you enjoy what you see and that before you leave, you will subscribe. And for all those returning viewers, I'm so happy to have you back again today. Um, I'm just so excited at having you with me and your commenting. I really enjoy having your comments and I look forward to them. And by the way, I respond to every single one. I have some fluff floating around here. I'm not too sure why. Um, so I hope before you leave, you'll give me a thumbs up and a comment. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> I like to talk about finished objects and works in progress. I only crochet, so you won't see any knitting here, but we do, um, we are happy to see those of you that like to submit something that is knitted in the um, monthly cow. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So I usually start with what I am wearing. And I promised to wear this quite a few weeks ago. And there's always something new coming up that I, I need to be showing you or wearing. So it's taken me about a month to get back to it. And for those that have been here, you will recognize this. I'm going to stand up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, this was made, I'm going to show you the sleeve now while I'm standing up. And I want to show you the difference. This was made with a hexagon, but notice how it is completely straight here like a bat wing so you see half of the hexagon in a like a semicircle front and back and then I put the two hexagons together this is made very very similar to the hexagon cardi but I'm going to show you something that's different first of all the hexagon cardi any that I've ever seen have been made with granny squares. And I made this solid, obviously. I did not want to have to wear something under it, so I had to make it solid. And you will recall that I mentioned at the time that I was making, uh, I was following a pattern that took the hexagon and left it open and put one side of the hexagon here, one side each way here, for the sleeves and then <clears throat> came down in to the waist and then the sixth side went across the waist and um, it wasn't going to fit me. The dimensions and the information she gave in the pattern, although it was very well done, it would only fit one size really. You could alter it a little bit going up or down, but it really wasn't going to work for as big as I needed to make it because when you made it big enough to go around the waist hip area, you would be making it bigger and bigger and bigger. And so you would have it way too tall or too long and it would make huge because take one side of it. If one side of it is going to go across your hips, it's also going to be the opening for the sleeve and then the sleeve would be stitched onto this. So, you know, I was halfway through making it and I knew it wasn't going to work. And I said, well, forget it. I'll just put it together the way a hexi cardigan is put together and I'll add a little more. I just have to add some in the middle on the front and the back so that I could make an opening for the neck. Now my neck is a wee bit tight but I don't mind because I like the closeness around the neck. Even though I have to pull to get it over my head, already putting it on once, well, twice now, I've stretched it a little bit, and I'm sure it will stretch a little bit more, and I like a nice close neck. So this is how it worked out. But this is the thing that I noticed, and maybe it's because it's a solid hexi, that, see how the sleeves are? 
they're straight across. They're a big, big bat wing, both sides. And I made a hexacardigan last spring with the uh, typical granny square. And if I can find the front of it, when you typically put, take a hexacardigan and why is it I cannot find the sleeves? Oh, I have it inside out. Um, when you typically put them together, see, we don't have that bat wing angle across. You get a definite side and a side, like an L. It doesn't go across on the angle. And I really... Things, I'm knocking things over here. I really don't understand why this one didn't come in and down unless, as I say, it's because it's solid and therefore bigger than this. I don't understand the difference at all, but it's the way it turned out. So I do have the cardigan. It's way bigger than I want and it's very, very heavy, but I do have that. But now I have this and when I first finished it, I wasn't really sure how well I liked it. I mean, the colors are very pretty. And of course, both sides do not match. There would be no way you could get a good match on both sides. And the same at the back. The front and the back look the same. Um, because the yarn I was look using was... Um, oh, I can't even remember. I did say at the time, and I had six balls of it. And I, oh, it was yarn I got from Timu. Uh, it doesn't have a name. It was just Timu, and it was mostly acrylic. And it reminded me a lot of some other yarn I have, which I hope to make a sweater out of it as well. But um, there was one color. I took out a lot of, there was a yellowy orange, and I did use some of it, but some of it was not a nice shade. So I took it out. And I used, I believe I had six balls, and I used most of it except for the um, real heavy yellow-orange part that I took out. So, finally, I'm wearing it. And now that I actually made myself put it on, I actually really like it. It's comfortable, and it's nice and warm because I'm down, you know, in the third level. So, it's cooler down here, and this feels great. And I just stitched it. I did an outside seam up here. I didn't mind. And then, of course, at the end, I had to put some sleeves on it. And the sleeves are quite, quite long as well. But I'm actually happy with it. Happier than I was with a few others I made. So I'm going to start wearing this a bit. I really want to see if I wear it much, if it starts pilling. That's a problem I've noticed with a few of the other sweaters that I've made is that they're pilling. Not nice, not nice at all. So anyway, that's what I, I'm i wearing. And uh, it's been finished for, I would say about a month. <clears throat> now, I'm really excited that I have three FOs this, this week, three FOs. But I'm not going to show you one of the FOs. It will wait till next week because it is the item I made for the monthly cow or mal as we're calling it this year. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that right now so I don't forget. For those of you that have not um, been here before or are fairly new, uh, at the beginning of every month, I show a picture. This year, all the pictures are tropical birds, very colorful tropical birds. I could have used this sweater for one of them, I think. Anyway, uh, I show a picture. You pick a color, and I have said, and I'm going to repeat for those that uh, didn't catch it, you do not have to pick every single color in the picture. I don't expect everybody's going to have every single color. And some of you actually notice the colors of the sort of background, and I don't notice that at all. I only notice the colors in the bird. But, you know, 
the last one was a um, a pink and sort of turquoisey blue bird with a one orange feather along the tail. And you may not have all those colors. I didn't put orange in mine. I simply took the pink and the teal, aqua, turquoise, whatever color you want to call it. Now, some people didn't have that pink, and they had a little bit of the bright blue, and they saw that the background had blues in it, maybe even grayish, and they took those colors. Take whatever colors you have. I don't want you to feel you have to go out and buy special colors every month. The whole purpose is to try and use your stash because I used my stash for every month this year. And you make something, anything you want. And this can be crochet, it can be knit, it could be felted, it could you could weave, you could dye yarn, whatever your yarn addiction is, <laughs> your yarn craft, you make something and you send me the picture. And this month, we're getting close to the end. You have to get your pictures to me by this Sunday because next Thursday is the 29th and the 29th of a short month is the 29th of the month. Now, normally on the first of the next month, I then do a slideshow of all the pictures and I show you next month's picture. But this month, I'm actually going to do it on the 29th because it is a Thursday. Uh, I didn't want to do a video on Thursday and again on Friday. So we're going to see the slideshow next Thursday where you'll see the work of everybody. And I've already gotten quite a few pictures from people, um, but you still have time to finish what you're working on. Um, so I need them by Sunday night because Monday I will be taking the time to make the list of, of what all has been sent to me and get the pictures and so on and uh, put it all together. It takes me a fair bit of work to edit it all. So that's um, what happens for the monthly cow. And I did finish my project for it, but I, I will wait till next week to show you since I have enough other things to show you this month. Okay, another item I made this month, uh, that <clears throat> this week, I finished this week. And as you know, I was working on three items. That's never gonna happen again. <laughs> Never say never, but I don't plan for it ever to happen again. Uh, I was working on a shawl, and this is the reading shawl from Ophelia Talks. Can I get back far enough that you can see most of it? Now, those of you that are familiar with the reading shawl will see that the sides are different. The original reading shawl had the open and a solid, open, solid, every other row. It was a two-row repeat. I changed it into a four-row repeat so that you get the open, solid, and then you get, I'll see it better down here, because up here, there are uh, cross stitches, single, a single, uh, stra uh, what would you call it? A single leg with a cross. But down here, I did more crosses that were two legs and then a cross. So it took up three stitches. So you'll see it's open, solid, cross stitch, solid, open, solid, cross stitch, solid, all the way. The back is pretty much solid. I, I did put cross stitches in a few times, but there is the finished um, Reading shawl, I would have liked to have made it a little bit bigger to be a little longer, but this is going in the donation box and I'm sure there will be shorter people in in the group that we give it to and it will go to a senior's home next fall. And I use this loops and thread, loops and thread. Uh, I do it wrong every time. Ombre Hughes ombre hues and I only had two balls of it and I didn't feel like going out and buying any more and it has 426 yards so 
you know, it used 850 yards. That's a fair amount. But this is a larger shawl than some. And it's made up of 75% polyester, 25% acrylic. So we can put it in a do donation. So that is one of my finished objects this past week. And I was glad to get it done. And another one of my finished objects is the mal I am working on in cooperation with um, Gina from the Knitting Turnpike. If you're not aware, um, Gina and I decided to collaborate on um, a make-along together and <clears throat> I have a dry throat. We, we did a video on January 27th. If you want to go back and look at the information, that would be when the, the live video was done. And it's on Gina's channel. I believe I have a link to it in the description box below. And we decided to do a make-along together. So we found a pattern that has both a, cross, a crochet I've been cross-stitching lately, a crochet version and a knit version. And they look very, very much the same. And um, we are hoping that the people on our channels would decide to make one of them. Now, some of, some of them are making both because there are people on each of our channels that do both um, crafts. So I am handling the crochet part of it. And we'll talk more about it in just a minute. And, and Gina is handling the knit version of it. Now, you need to finish whatever you decide to do, one or two. Some people are doing three and four because they want to try different colors, although I don't think they expect to be finished for them by the deadline. But the deadline is March the 6th. And you must email your picture of your finished object to both Gina and me. And we are going to do another live on March the 9th. And we will show pictures of your finished objects. And there will be some prizes. And I think it will be a fun time. Now, we haven't settled on a time. But... We still have two or three more weeks before that happens. So I'll probably be talking to her within the next week. I think I would like to be able to tell you by next week, which is the end of February, uh, what time that live will be. So I'll make a plan to talk to Gina within the next week. Gina has been struggling with uh, major problems with her eyesight. And uh, she's been to see several doctors and they finally have concluded what the problem is. And, and she's getting some medicine for it to clear it up. So hopefully she's feeling better very soon and able to see better. That's been a problem for her. But anyway, back to the Reverdi pattern, which is the crochet version of this make-along. Now, I did show this one a few weeks ago and I did this one first I don't want to knock anything over here and this one I used some minis and I I doubled them up I did it two stranded to make it like a DK weight and I made it narrower. So the pattern, the crochet pattern, once you chain them and then work into whatever stitch, you end up working with 80 stitches to work back and forth on. This only has 44 stitches. So you can see that it is narrower than the actual pattern. And I started at this end with the charcoal and the gray and the pink and switched colors. And then I, I started, I didn't at the very beginning, but then I started um, marling the two colors and working into the next color and so on. And it made this, we end down here 
with purples into browns. And it made it, I, I didn't actually measure it, but on my blocking boards, it was just over eight feet wide. I don't know how, uh, sorry, eight feet long. I don't know how wide it is, but I'm going to say that it looks to be about maybe 10 inches or so, and it is done on the bias. You're actually stitching straight like this, but because you decrease on one side and increase on the other, it puts it on a bias. It's a very, um, it's a very beginner friendly pattern. And it's a great pattern to maybe learn to read patterns if you only follow tutorials. And it's a great pattern to learn how to do a bias stitch. So this one, um, I did show a couple of weeks ago and it is posted on Ravelry and it is posted on Instagram. And while I'm mentioning that, I might as well talk about those. Um, I'm Judy's Creations 21, <sighs> something in my eye, on Ravelry. And I have opened a discussion thread there, a discussion thread for anything you want, but a lot of people have been using it to show their yarn and, and their progress on this pattern. Um, we also um, have people posting on Instagram. Everybody uses different social media. So if you're posting on Instagram, you would use the hashtag uh, Turnpike Creations Mal 24. And you will see that in the caption uh, the, under the picture. You will also see that hashtag uh, in the description box. And also, we set up, well, Gina set up for us a, um, a Facebook page. And the Facebook page, same name, Turnpike Creations Mal 24. And a lot of activity there. We probably have, I don't know, 54 or 55 people that have joined that Facebook page. It's only open to people participating in this mail. You have to answer a couple of questions to be accepted into the group. And people are showing the yarn they're using. They're showing their progress. We had people that had concerns and questions and problems, and they came on and, and got help. And um, people are starting to show their finished project. And that brings me over here to this. And this is the actual um, version I intended to make for this mal. And today is part two of the mal. Last week we talked about the beginning. And today we're going to talk about part two. So I'm going to take this off. <clears throat> And, and talk a little bit about progress. Okay, we had a little problem, a little accident, and as you'll see, my yarn has fallen down. So we have to do a little editing here. And now we're going to talk about this, um, this wrap. So the first thing I wanna tell you about this wrap is I chose three skeins of yarn for it and in the middle, I wasn't too pleased with it, but I decided to persevere and finish the wrap. Uh, the third color really didn't excite me. And I'm going to come back and talk about what to do about choosing colors, which I should have done when I started this. But anyway, the first thing is I was planning to follow the pattern exactly, with the addition of more stitches because I wanted to make it wide enough for a wrap. So you can see that this one is a fair bit wider. I don't know exactly how wide, I haven't measured it, but there were 86 stitches going across. So this was part one, which I showed you last week. These two colors, this is at my A and B, up to here. Now, if I were ever to do this again, and I might, because it is straightforward enough, and I do like a bias wrap, I would put the third color, which doesn't come in until you've done all of this, I would put some of it in the middle here, maybe halfway. 
Then you start this. Now, I want to tell you, because uh, I did hear one comment that somebody said, okay, they followed part A, which said do, you know, do this section and then repeat seven times alternating the colors. And then they saw, oh, part two, and they thought part two was different. But once you have done this first section with two solid, two open and two solid, you've learned all there is to know about this pattern. It takes two rows of solid forward and back and two rows of open forward and back. And you know all you need to know. So when you go into part two, all that's happening is how many rows you do and what color you use. So it starts with two rows of open, two rows of solid, and it does that three times. Two rows of open, two solid. Two rows open, two solid. And then it has you repeat. And there's where there may be some confusion in the instructions because then it says repeat part one twice one in a color a and one in color b and i wasn't thinking and i thought oh it means to repeat these six rows in a and in b and then I went back and looked and I said, part one. This is not called part one. This is the first six rows of part two. And I have a feeling she really meant to do these six rows in A and these six rows in B, which is solid, open, solid, solid, open, solid. So after I had already done these six rows of just A, color A, and I started color B, I thought, I think it's wrong, and I'm not taking it all out and starting it again. So I just did four rows of this color and kept on going and said, okay, I'm going to do my own thing color-wise from then on. So that would be what is considered the end of um, part two. Actually, I think part one is the biggest part of this wrap. And then um, next week, we'll talk about finishing it up. And uh, from then on, I'll have to tell you right now, I didn't follow any special pattern that she said about how many to do of each thing. I'll talk about these open rows next time. So there wasn't really much new in part two. There's a little bit different in part three. But I have finished mine and blocked it. And I'm quite happy with it. It's much longer than I thought it was. I didn't think it was particularly long when I finished. But it does block out quite nicely. So um, that's it for the um, Mal between Gina and I. I just want to remind you, you have to be finished your... Um, your project, if you're doing one or two, is fine. Some people are doing two of the same thing, like two crochet. I did two crochet, but uh, there are quite a few people that are doing one knit, one crochet. It's up to you. And I think a lot of people are adapting the pattern to make it their own. It definitely, she told us, is a recipe to do it in whatever way you like. So, uh, okay. So that was my second finished object. And my third finished object, of course, is the item for my monthly cow, which you will see next week. So let's move on then. Uh, I want to move on to one work in progress. And it was also in progress before I started those three. But I put that aside while I did the other three. So here is one work in progress, only one, because you know that's all I like to do at once. And I am making a shawl, and it is, um, it is called, uh, I think it's called Rivers of Dreams. And it uses three skeins of yarn. I'm using this um, variegated pink, 
and the solid pink together in one section and it stripes back and forth and i think it's called field of dreams that's what it is field of dreams and then these which alternate back and forth are in a solid section and then it has a lace section between the solid sections so these are the colors i'm using and these two look quite different but when you're stitching them together you don't see a lot of difference and i'm using a 3.5 dots hook and i am this far through And I will tell you more about the yarn. Um, hopefully, I'll have this done at the end of the week, and I'll have time next week to tell you more about it. But here is my progress. And you see in here where you're alternating between the two pinks, you don't see a lot of difference. Um, but anyway, that's what I'm working on right now. And I hope to have finished before next week, and I hope it stretches out a fair bit. Um, but I'll tell you more about the yarn and everything next week when it is completed. So that's all I'm working on, one project. But I'm getting ready to do two more, again, one after the other. But I saw, I was planning to do a shawl. And then just this past week, I saw... Um, a pattern on um, it, uh, Instagram. And I saw it and I said, oh, I really want to do it. And it's by the same designer as this one I just showed you. And I said, you know what? I think I'm going to do it first. It's a cowl. So it'll be a short project. And then I will go to the shawl I was talking about. So I, uh, it's called something like teal, teal something, uh, cowl and I'm going to use these two colors these are the cowl is made in a DK weight I wanted to do something a little different and a cowl to me up here I'd like it to be comfy so these are both um, uh, alpaca silk DK I'm still playing with this. I'm using a new camera. I don't know if you've noticed things are a little different, but that's Alpaca Silk DK. And um, both of them are. They are extremely soft because they're 50% 50 50 Alpaca and 50% de um, Silk. It feels heavenly, and I thought it was a little bit different than what I normally do. And I don't think it's going to use all of it, although most of it. And it's a cowl that gets a little bit wider as it goes down. So hopefully I'll get that started before next week and maybe even be close to finishing it next week. So that's the next plan. And then finally, I was going to do this. Now give me a second. I reach back here to get my yarn. I saw a shawl that's been in my queue for for quite a little while and um, finally decided, you know what, now is the time to do it. And my original plan was to use two yarns from Expression Fiber Arts. And this one, and this one is definitely going to get used. The top is... Um, somewhat solid it has a few open rows but it's somewhat solid and then it has a bottom section in another color that is all lace and the lace has beads in it and i've been wanting to do something with beads for a long time so i decided this is yak silk lace um, so i'd be working with something a wee bit finer and that's the color see the blues pinks and so on i'm going to be taking this off in just a minute and i was going to put this with it because i thought it went with the blue it's not exact but i thought it was close 
and I was quite sure this is what I was going to do. And then I have these beads, which are kind of um, iridescent holographic to put in it. Then the more I looked at it, the more I thought, you know, that isn't really the color of blue. I don't know if you can tell, but this is a very deep teal color. And this is quite a bright blue. So then I went looking at things again and I thought, hmm, maybe this color has more teal in it. And it does match that teal very nicely. Now this is Yak Silk. This is plain Merino Nylon Blend. Um, so it is a wee bit heavier. So I thought, well, maybe I better stay to something thinner. And I wasn't really planning it, but, whoops, I'm sorry. I shook the uh, the camera. I did have this. I'm not sure this is the best color, but I did have this out next to it, but I think it's a little too dull. And finally, I said, well, why don't you, um, what is this? Um, this is a pack of silk lace. So these are both lace. But they wouldn't match those beads. I would actually have to go and get beads to match this because I don't have that color. And then I went looking through things and said, well, take another look and see if there's anything else that you like. And I came up with this, which is brighter. And, um, oh, I've got to get used to this camera sitting here on a tripod. I'm knocking it all the time. I apologize. And I don't think those beads work either. Now, I thought what I would do today is talk about, I read something somewhere that, that talked about how to determine if you are choosing the right colors when you're picking colors out to put together. And the thing they said you should do, and I'm going to do it with two of the colors because I don't want to take them all apart, um, is not just just put them side by side like I did here, but what you really should do is take the skeins. I hate unraveling them because I never get them back together again, but now you can see the colors in this better. Um, see, see the colors in there? And they definitely are similar to this color. But to take your two skeins, so I'm going to unravel these two. These are the original two I had planned. And they are both, I think, that's yak silk. Oh, man. And that's yak silk. These are both the same fiber. And that's why I originally picked them. I uh, I will get better at this. That's why I seem to be very uh, discombobulated today. Is this new new filming strategy? Okay, so you they say to take your two skeins, and you this is <coughs> you would want to do this too when you're trying to decide if things should go together. When I open it up, I can see more of these colors in here. That's why I thought about using this color. But anyway, they say, take your two skeins and wrap them together and see if you think they work when you wrap them together. Now, when I wrap these two together, I say, uh, maybe. <laughs> Let me put this brighter part here. Yeah. 
And honestly, I'm thinking that blue is too bright. That's my opinion. So I hate to take this apart. And this is a little bit heavier than that one. But I think we need to do a second one to compare. So I'm going to take this just down to the end here. And I'm going to wrap this one together and see how it turns out. I want to get the part with the blue out here. Well, what do you think? That blue looks to me like a better color choice. Do you think? I really don't think that these pink ones This is um, alpaca silk lace. So this is a lace as well. Well, you know what? What the heck? I've opened this many. I might as well open another one. That other one I think is, is probably too bright. So, uh, I don't see any pink showing up there with it. Of course, you're not getting, I, this is light is much brighter than I think um, I like, but. Would you put the pink with it instead? Would it be a better choice? Uh, I wish some of that pink would actually show in the twist. There we go. So, okay. We have, um, and how would these beads look with this? Oh, the beads would look okay with either blue. I don't think the beads look very good. Well, you know what? They might work with this bright one. They're more blue than pink. Do I need to get that one out as well and put it with this? Because... There is, no, I don't think this really does it. It's too purple. Okay, so that, that choice is gone. We have three choices here, and um, two of them are, I got all tangled up with all the signs. Okay, I have the pink one as we'll call it choice one. I'll do some. Pink one is choice one. 
I would have to get new, more beads for that to work. Or we have blue, the bright blue, which is choice two. Or the blues are. Or we have the what I'm going to call teal. as choice three i think i know which one it should be but i really would like to hear your thoughts on it the um, the, th the thickness isn't going to matter too too much there's the difference in the thickness because they're going to be separate this will be one section and then this will attach down below and it'll be open lace. So I'm thinking that this color goes with it better. But if enough people say they like that other blue or the pink, one, two, or three, I will I will go with it simply because this is a better weight. But every time I look at it under the lights, it looks too bright. It looks too bright for it. This color looks like the better blue. But the pink looks good as well, and it is also a lace weight. Put that over on the other side. Okay, have we fiddled around with this long enough that you're uh, ready to move on? <laughs> Anyhow, that's um, that's the choices. One is the pink, two is the bright blue, and three is what we're gonna, I'm going to call teal. And I got to pick one of those by next week to um, maybe if I put them all together here like this. Next week I'm going to be starting this, so I have to make a decision. All right, I have one last thing to show you. If you remember last week, I talked about my various um, yarn subscription boxes. And I want to thank viewers who told me about some other yarn subscription boxes from some other Canadian dyers. So I am looking into them. And I think I'm going to choose, there are two others, they're both out west. I think I will choose one of them uh, to try before next month. But this is one I did get from England, and I told you already I will be uh, canceling it just because the subscription box is uh, minis. Now, first of all, I'm going to put a picture up here. This is how it arrived. I thought they were so um, nicely packaged up, and that impressed me. So at some point, I will buy more yarn from this person. Now, this is called Green Lampkin Yarn, and this is a um, blank. It's got a name to it. It's the... Um, hmm. It's some, uh, where's the name? Oh, it's on here. <sighs> you can tell I'm really ready. Oh, the Secret Treasure Box Blanket. I must have been somewhere else when I was planning this because I wouldn't have bought it had I noticed that it was minis. This came with it, which is a cute little, uh, like a, a coin and... A jewel so that's a, a stitch marker that came with it and the subscription is this you get four Hanks every month and I believe there is a pattern to make a blanket to use these now right away you know I wouldn't be too keen on this one um, I also want to tell you these are all sparkle so that did appeal to me. So take that one out. Now the other end of that one is actually, see, yellow at one end and it's pink, purple, and red at the other. So 
Anyway, these two I really, really like. Like the colors of them. A little bit of purple in the one green. And then the fourth one is this red one. And it's sort of in the middle for me. I like it. I don't like it. It's sparkle. It's nice. But um, as nice as these are, they do feel nice. They are 75% merino, 20 nylon, and 5 stellina. And they are... Oh, that's the other reason why I don't want to keep getting them. They're DK. I must not have been reading this or something when I ordered it because... More minis, DK. I don't have a lot of DK minis, so I'm not too sure what I'm going to do with this. I'd have to double double up on anything I put it with. But when I was making the order, coming from the UK, did you get a good look at her? And there's her information. Um... Instagram, Facebook, Etsy, Green Lampkin Yarn, Green Lampkin Yarn on Etsy. I didn't recall doing it on Etsy, but anyway. And then I ordered two other skeins of yarn as well. So the first one is this, and it is 80% Falkland yarn, 20% nylon. There's 400 meters um and it's uh, the color is baby bedrock i guess and so we have a pinky purpley burgundy kind of color down to purples and blues feels nice it's an average feeling yarn feels nice i i like the colors i mean i did pick it it wasn't a mystery and then this is the other one i got and i really really like this one um, and it's 75% merino, 20 nylon, and 5% stellina, 400 meters superwash. It's her sparkle fairy, uh, sorry, sparkle sock base, and the color is frost fairy. So you see there's some purple. It is um, kind of a very light pink base. And then you see there's purple and bright pinks. And there's some blue back here. And in this end, again, there's some blues and pinks. A little bit of teal. I really like this one. Uh, I'm quite happy with it. But I will be contacting her to cancel the monthly subscription because I don't want DK minis. I don't want minis at all. I've got, I looked at my minis the other day. I don't know what. I'm going to start putting them together in groups of colors and probably giving them away as gifts. So anyway, that is from Green Lampkin Yarn in the UK. And it is quite nice yarn if you're looking for something another company to get yarn from so that uh, brings us to the end of this week i will be trying out a couple more um, subscription boxes but i am happy with the two i've kept one is fireweed i expected february by now but i don't have it yet it'll come probably next week and Color of My Fiber, I see some other people have been getting Color of My Fiber and seem to be happy with it. So remember, Sunday is the deadline to get me pictures for the F February uh, Tropical Bird Mal. And next Thursday, we'll be taking up time to have a slideshow of all of your pictures. And... Um, and I'm going to finish that um, I'm going to work on finishing this before next week and getting started on the cowl with these two I'm really looking forward to using this it has a little different stitch and these colors are a little different and they're softer than soft they are lovely. I do have a couple of other yarn acquisitions to show you, and we'll see what the time is like next week because of the slideshow. That always takes a fair bit of time. So until next week, happy hooking.